All right, Wednesday softball here at Lemoy Field. We welcome you to the campus here at Post University in Waterbury, Connecticut. It is Post coming to this one at 4-26 and 26 on the year, 1-13 and 13 in conference, and for Chestnut Hill, 1-19 and 19 overall, 0-12 oh in conference. As we welcome you upstairs to the broadcast booth, Griffin Castle on hand, so glad you are with us on the CACC Network here on this Wednesday afternoon. It's cloudy, a little windy, but the temperatures are at a great point for some softball. So both of these teams coming to this one, trying to snap their losing streaks. Chestnut Hill, the Griffins, is at 16 games. Post is at six games, as Post coming off of that doubleheader yesterday right here at Lemoy Field where they played against the University of Bridgeport. Lost the first game 8-3, and then the second game 9-5. And for Chestnut Hill, again, 0-12 in conference, 1-19 overall coming off of their 6-1 loss against Goldie Beacom in Philadelphia yesterday. Yesterday, pardon me, at 4 p.m. Let's set the field here for the Eagles. Similar and typical lineup out there on the field here for the Eagles. Rick Arduli is in left. Samantha Rick Arduli, that is. She is one hit away from her 100th hit in her post-university career. In center field, Carly Peruso. In right field, the freshman Alyssa Calabrese. At third base, Caitlin D'Angelis, who is two hits away from 150 hits in her post-career. At shortstop, Brooke Dickinson. At second base, Julia Meda. At first base, Lily Tomasello behind the dish. As always is Juliana Sakala. And on the mound is the first year, the left-hander, Devin Barnett. Her fifth pitch of the game is in the dirt. Taking a look at Barnett's numbers on the year. She's 0-9, making her 12th start of the year. 5.75 ERA and 52.1 innings of work head coach here for the Eagles Julie Meyer Jones in her third season head coach for the Griffins is David Scott in his first season 2-0 count here to the leadoff batter Camille Dunham playing left field here today for the Griffins post 26 and 4 all time against Chestnut Hill they have won the last 8 matchups and Barnett Finds the strike zone right there on the outside corner. The Griffins have not beaten the Eagles since April 13th, 2019. It has been nearly five years to the day since the Griffins have defeated the Eagles. 2-1. That is hit out into right center field. Coming in is Calabrese to make the grab for the first out of the first of two. Again, we're playing a doubleheader here today on this Wednesday afternoon. Morris Guzman up at the dish right now, the DP for Chestnut Hill. 34 at-bats, only four hits on the year. Takes that first run right down Broadway for a strike. Barnett able to get ahead on the count here, 0-2. And, and she deals to home. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Sakala will throw it down to first in time. Two down here in the top of the first. Eagles looking for a nice little 1-2-3 to start things off here in the doubleheader. So Miana Lopez Del Haro will step in. She is first on the team in batting averages here at 393. 56 at bats, 22 hits, 714 slugging percentage, and she fouls the first pitch away. Lopez Del Haro, a sophomore, stands at 5'2. The offering from Barnett, and it's fouled away once more.
Barnett on the year has allowed 92 hits, struck out 11. Ahead on the count here, 0-2 to the number three batter for the Griffins. Eagles looking for the 1-2-3 here to start things off. And the third consecutive foul ball from Lopez Del Haro. Lopez Del Haro went 0 for 3 against Goldie Beacom yesterday in the 6 1 loss. Once again, the 0 2. The fourth consecutive foul ball. Lopez Del Haro is on it. Trying to start a little bit of a two out rally here for the Griffins. And so glad you're with us here on this Wednesday afternoon on the CACC Network. Eagles and the Griffins. The bottom two seeds here in the CACC. Barnett gets a swing and a miss on Lopez Del Haro, and it's a 1-2-3 for the Eagles in the top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first here in Waterbury. All right, let's set the field here for the Griffins. Out in left field, we'll start with the outfield first. Camille Dunham in center field, Giselle McLaughlin in right field, Kayla Rolone. And in the infield, Skylar Cunningham is at the hot corner at third base. At shortstop, it is Miana Lopez Del Haro, who just struck out to end things in that top of the first. At second base, Jen Pokropinski at first base, it is... Anastasia Watson, and behind the dish, Erica Kwasek on the mound here today, getting the game one start for the Griffins. It is number 27, Michelle Baker, a freshman from Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at the numbers here for Baker on the year. She's 1-8 with a 7.5 ERA in 51.1 innings of work, making her 11th start of the year in the 12th game that she's appeared in. Eagles got a 1-2-3. To start things off in the top of the first, Samantha Rickard-Dooley, the fifth year, will step in here, a graduate student from Yorktown, New York. She needs one more hit to get to 100 hits in her post-university career. A huge milestone. You get right after her, who's on deck, Caitlin DeAngelis is two hits away from 150 hits in her post-university career. Baker misses low. Again, a cloudy day here in Waterbury. McCardoli swings and misses at that one. Temperatures in the low 60s. Not a lot of wind. As McCardoli pokes that into shallow left field, and there it is. And she slides into second. 100 hits for Samantha Riccarduli in her post-university career. Give it up for the left fielder. An excellent milestone. She reaches it in her graduate year here at post. And that will bring up the other eagle who is looking for her hitting milestone. Two hits away, and DeAngelis is at 150 hits for her post-university career. So no outs, a runner in scoring position, and D'Angelo skies that into left field. Under it, and making the grab is Dunham for out number one. Now 
That will bring up Lily Tomasello. Usually hits in the cleanup spot, but her and Sakala in the lineup here today switching. Sakala is going to be hitting cleanup and Tomasello at the three spot. Tomasello on the year, third on the team in batting average, hitting 253. Takes that one for a strike. Making her 31st start of the year in the 31st game that she's appeared in. Leads the team in home runs with five and make it six. Lily Tomasello leads a yard with a two run blast. <laughs> right as I said, she leads the team in home runs with five. Uh, half a second later, she cranks her six of the year and it is 2-0 Eagles to start here in the bottom of the first. So Tomasello with her 20th RBI on the year, her sixth home run, and her 80, or excuse me, her 22nd hit. 2-0 Eagles here in the bottom of the first. And Sakala digs in here. She is fourth on the team in batting, average at 250, making her 28th start in the 28th game that she's appeared in. 76 at-bats, 19 hits. For the senior from Cedar Grove, New Jersey. And rips that one into left field. It'll be a single for Sakala. And Julia Mehta will step in here. Six on the team in batting average at 178. 73 at-bats, 13 hits. Meta pokes that to the right side. And the Griffins get the Lead runner there, Sakala at seconds. A nice play from Pokropinski. Two down, or excuse me. Yes, two down here in the bottom of the first. So Bailey Dickinson getting the start here. Her 12th start of the year. Hitting 229, 35 at bats, 8 hits. Pokes that one foul. That one's fouled away by Dickinson. Brooke Dick or excuse me, Bailey Dickinson, a junior from Vineland, New Jersey. Three hits here for the Eagles in the bottom of the first. They have a two run lead thanks to that Lily Tomasello two run bomb made a runs and that's fouled away by Dickinson that one's well hit into center field but barely having to move there was McLaughlin to make the grab. Eagles get three hits in the bottom of the first. Lily Tomasello leaves the yard with a two-run shot, and the Eagles with a 2-0 lead as we head to the top of the second right here in Waterbury.
Top of the second here at Lemoy. Eagles with a 2-0 lead after the first inning. 4-5-6 due up here for the Griffins. Skyler Cunningham playing third base today for the Griffins will step in. Second on the team in batting average at 327 on the year, making her 20th start. 52 at-bats, 17 hits, 346 slugging percentage, and a 375 on base percentage. Bardette with a nice little 1-2-3 in the top of the first. Let's see what she has for an encore. Her first pitch of the second inning is a swing and a miss by Cunningham. Cunningham squares, pulls it back, and swings at that one and fouls it away. Cunningham went one for three yesterday against Goldie Beacom in the 6-1 loss. The 0-2. Dribbled to DeAngelis, fields it, and throws it to Tomasello in time. Jen Pokropinski will step in here for Chestnut Hill. 32 at-bats, four hits on the year. Fouls that one away into the Eagles' bullpen. Eagles the 11th seed in the CACC. The Griffins the 12th seed. And dead last. So that one is poked. It is to Maida, and she tracks it down in shallow center. Two down here in the top of the second. So there's the right fielder, Kayla Rolone. Hitting 186 on the year, 43 at-bats, 8 hits. Barnett looking for another 1-2-3. Misses that one upstairs and out. Rolone went 0 for 2 yesterday with a strikeout against Goldie Beacom. That one is poked to the right side and it drops foul. Again, Eagles have only lost four games all time against Chestnut Hill. Chestnut Hill looking for their first win here in the doubleheader for the first time since April 13th, 2019. And both teams trying to snap their losing streaks. Chestnut Hill, it's at 16 games. Post, it is at six games. Barnett winds and fires, and it's fouled away. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, top of the second. Eagles lead it 2-0. Barnett with a 1-2-3 in the top of the first. And looking for the same exact thing here in the top of the second. The 2-2 on its way from number six. Count has reached its distance. Three balls, two strikes. Barnett with 17 pitches, two strikeouts, zero walks, zero hits. And the payoff. Rolled over, DeAngelis fields it, throws it across a diamond. Six up, six down for Barnett. We head to the bottom of the second, 2-0 Eagles.
Bottom of the second, 7-8-9 do appear for the Eagles. The freshman Calabrese will step in. Calabrese, 62 at-bats on the year, 9 hits. A first year from Oakville, Connecticut. Takes the first one from Baker inside, but it paints the inside corner for a strike. 21 pitches now for Baker as that one is rolled over and foul down the third base line. Three hits for the Eagles, zero for the Griffins. 2-0 lead thanks to the Lily Tomasello. Two-run shot, her sixth home run of the year. The 0-2, check swing. Dribbled to the right side and pick up and thrown to first by Pokero Pinsky for out number one here in the bottom of the second. So here's a shortstop, Brooke Dickinson. She'll dig in. 68, bat, 68 at bats on the year, eight hits, swings at the first pitch, and misses. Dickinson, 147 slugging percentage at 2 2 1 on base percentage. A junior from Vineland, New Jersey. Baker deals low. A ball. The raindrops starting to come down a little bit. Dickinson fouls that one away. That one's rolled over to the left side. Pick up and fired across the diamond. That's a nice play by the shortstop, Lopez Del Haro, for out number two here at the bottom of the second. Carly Perusa, the center fielder, steps in here for the Eagles. Fifth on the team in batting average, hitting 206 on the year. 14 hits and 68 at bats. 279 slugging percentage and a 313 on base percentage. In game two yesterday against Bridgeport, she went one for three. Game one, 0 for two. Making her 31st start of the year. She hits that a line drive to center, and it will fall and go to the fence. That's going to be a two-out. She's going to dig for third, and Peruso is in there sliding. A two-out triple for the center fielder. And that will bring up the top of the order, Rick Arduli, who had that blue double in her first at-bat to get her 100th hit in her post-university career. Gerdley rolls over on that one, bobbled, and stepped on the bag on the first pitch there by Watson. They strand Peruso on third, and we head to the top of the third here at Lemoy Field. It is 2-0 Eagles.
Top of the third here in Waterbury, Connecticut. 7-8-9 due up here for the Griffins here in the top of the third. Anastasia Watson will step in, hitting 156 on the year, seven hits and 45 at-bats. Barnett misses low and outside. Two strikeouts for Barnett in two innings of work. Zero walks, zero hits. And the 1-0. Flown out into left field. Rick Arduli, can of corn. And Kwasek, the catcher, will step in here for the Griffins. Only one hit in 23 at-bats this year, and Barnett paints the inside corner for strike one. Barnett with 25 pitches. And delivers the 0-1. Misses outside. Kosek. 0 for 3 against Goldie Beacom in the 6-1 loss yesterday. Takes that one in the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. One out here in the top of the third. Barnett winds and fires. And that is poked right to Tomasello. And she makes the easy catch in the infield. Two down here in the top of the third. So here's the nine hitter, the center fielder, Giselle McLaughlin. One hit in 18 at bats this year, making her eighth start of the season. A freshman from War Minister, Pennsylvania. Right handed batter takes that one upstairs for ball one. Barnett with 30 pitches now. One out. That is flown or lined right to Meta. Nine up, nine down for Barnett. We head to the bottom of the third. Two zero Eagles. Two, three, four. Do up here for the Eagles in the bottom of the third. A 2-0 lead for Post. They have four hits. Baker back on the mound here. Four hits allowed. Two earned runs. Zero walks. Zero strikeouts in 33 pitches. DeAngelis flew out to left field in her first at-bat. Again, two hits here in the doubleheader, and she will reach the 150-hit milestone in her post-university career. Only 14 players have done that here with the Eagles. That one's up and in. That one's foul down the third base line.
DeAngelis in game one yesterday against Bridgeport right here at Lemoy went one for three in game two. She went two for four. And she skies that into left field down the left field line. And Dunham had a room there but couldn't make the grab. So DeAngelis will get another life. Again, DeAngelis first on the team in batting average this year. 356 coming into the doubleheader. 500 slugging percentage takes that one low and out. And a 437 on base percentage. Leading the team in batting average, slugging percentage, and on base percentage. And she draws a walk in her second at bat of game one. Outfield back as Tomasello had her sixth home run of the year in her first at bat, a two run shot to left. Takes the first pitch low. Tomasello went 0 for 4 in game one yesterday, and then 2 for 3 in game two as she singles right up the middle for her second hit of the game. Juliana Sakala digs in, single to left field in her first at bat. There's a nice line drive. Got a runner in scoring position. That is DeAngelis on second, Tomasello on first. In game two yesterday, Sakala went 0 for 1. Didn't get the start. Brianna Hines got the start behind the dish, and she skies that into center field. And coming over to make the grab is the right fielder, Rolone. For out number one here in the bottom of the third. Maida reached first on a fielder's choice in her first at bat. Game one yesterday, Maida went one for four. In game two, she went 0 for two with an RBI. The 1-0 is ripped into center. Under it and making the grab is McLaughlin for out number two here in the bottom of the third. So Eagles get two base runners in the first two at-bats and then make two outs consecutively. And that will bring up the DP. Brooke Bailey Dickinson who flew out to center in her first at-bat. And she lines that right to second base. Pokro Pinsky makes the grab. So Eagles get two runners on to start the inning and then make three consecutive outs. Three innings are in the books. We head to the top of the fourth. Eagles two, Griffin zero. One, two, three, top of the order here, due up for the Griffins. Hitless here, and they haven't had a runner on base. Nine up, nine down for Barnett. Two strikeouts, zero walks, zero hits, 31 pitches through three innings of work. Five hits for the Eagles. A 2-0 lead. 
Dunham who flew out to right in her first at bat steps in. Takes that one upstairs for ball one. Again, Barnett, a freshman from National Park, New Jersey. Delivers the 1-0 upstairs and out. Two out. Paints the outside corner. A nice delivery there by Barnett. Two balls, one strike. And that's the first hit of the day for Chestnut Hill. And their first base runner here in the top of the fourth. Kuzman struck out swinging in her first at bat. Squares and lays down the sack bunt. That's a beauty. Sakala throws it to first in time. And Dunham is safe at seconds. So Guzman does her job, advances the runner on the sack bunt. One down here in the top of the fourth. Miana Lopez Del Haro struck out swinging in her first at bat. Again, leads the team in batting average this year. Leads them in hits at 22. Leads them in RBIs. The only Griffin in double figure runs batted in on the year at 11. And she pokes that into right center field. That's going to drop, and it will bring home a run. An RBI double for Lopez Del Haro, and the Griffins are on the board. It's 2-1 Eagles, her 12th RBI of the year. So Barnett facing the first type of adversity she had, she's, has had to face all game. Two hits here for Chestnut Hill in the top of the fourth. And Cunningham skies that into left in foul ground. Rick Arduli makes the grab for out number two here in the top of the fourth. Progropinski, who flew out to shallow center in her first at-bat, steps in. Tying run is on second. That is Lopez Del Haro. Two down here in the top of the fourth. That's skied into center. Peruso under it on the first pitch. And that will retire the side. The Griffins get one across in the top of the fourth. And we head to the bottom of the fourth. Game moving along. It's 2-1 Eagles. Bottom of the fourth here at Lemoy Field. It's 2-1 Eagles. Five hits for post, two for Chestnut Hill. And it is going to be 7-8-9 due up here for the Eagles in the bottom of the fourth. Calabrese ground out to second. 
In her first at bat, the freshman steps in, a Connecticut native from Oakville. First pitch in the bottom of the fourth is a bloop, and the catch cannot be made. Lopez Del Haro got her glove on it, but couldn't corral it, and a error. I believe that's going to be on Chestnut Hill, first error of the game. So the shortstop, Brooke Dickinson, who ground out to short in her first at-bat, tries to lay down the sack. Bunts, and it's fair. Bit of confusion there from the Griffins infield. They wanted to tail foul, but it never did. A bunt single for Dickinson has runners at second and first. No outs in the bottom of the fourth. And Peruso will step in. She had that triple to center field in her first at bat. Squares, lays it down, a beautiful bunt, and she advances the runners and does her job and trips up after hitting the bag at first. Seems to be okay. So there's one down here in the bottom of the fourth. Runners advance Calabrese at third, and Dickinson at second with the top of the order, Rick Arduli. Who had a blue double in her first at bat, crowned out to first in her previous at bat. First pitch to Rick Arduli's in the dirt, and Calabrese will steal home, and she doesn't even need to slide. 3 1 Eagles on the pass ball. Rick Arduli rolls over on that one. Dickinson will stay put at third, and Rick Arduli grounds out. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Rain picking up just a little bit here in Waterbury. A few more drizzles than we've experienced here thus far. Again, temperatures in the low 60s, cloudy. Not a whole lot of wind on this Wednesday afternoon on April 10th. Regular season ends here for the Eagles on April 24th. That's a rip to the left side. It will bring home Dickinson. And I believe they're going to rule that as a hit. I wonder what they're going to rule there for DeAngelis as she ripped that one to the left side. 4-1 Eagles. An RBI for DeAngelis. Her 14th run batted in on the year. And Tomasello, who's 2-2. Two for two. Tomasello had a two-run home run in her first at-bat and then singled up the middle in her second at-bat. So they rule that a single for DeAngelis, an RBI single. She is now one hit away from becoming the 15th player in post-university history, in softball history, that is, obviously, to reach the 150-hit milestone. Tomasello walks, DeAngelis to second, Tomasello to first, and now we're bringing up the catcher, Sakala, who's one for two. Single to left in her first at-bat, flew out to center in her previous at-bat. So eight hits here for the Eagles, two for the Griffins. 4-1 lead here for Post. Trying to snap their six-game losing streak. It's 
Sakala, the senior. Last year as a junior, played in 39 games and started in 32 of them. Takes that one right down Broadway for a strike. Last year she hit 232. This year hitting 250. Coming into the double header, she rolls over on that one. And the third base right there. Cunningham just steps on the bag at third to get the lead runner, and that will do it for the bottom of the fourth. The Eagles get two across and take a 4-1 lead as we head to the top of the fifth. Top of the fifth here at Lemoy. A 4 1 lead for the Eagles. It is 6 7 8. Due up here for the Griffins. Rolone ground out to third in her first at bat. Eight hits for Post, two for Chestnut Hill. Barnett at 40 pitches, two hits, one earned run. Zero walks, two strikeouts. And misses upstairs on the first offering here in the top of the fifth. Malone pops that one up in the infield. Tomasello's under it and makes the catch for out number one here in the top of the fifth. Watson rolls over on that one. A hard hit ball. Dickinson with a nice play. And she throws it to first in time. Out number two here in the top of the fifth. Krosek will step in. The catcher popped up to first in her first at bat. Barnett looking for a nice little one, two, three. Here at the top of the fifth. One ball, one strike, two outs. Fouled away behind the backstop. Kosek, a junior from Northbridge, Massachusetts. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Barnett looking for the one, two, three here in the top of the fifth. That's a nice spot there. Trying to get the batter to chase on the upstairs and out delivering. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Barnett winds and fires. And it's spoiled. Foul tip there by the catcher. One 
Once again, the 2-2 popped up in foul ground. Tomasello makes the grab. A 1-2-3 in the top of the fifth. We head to the bottom of the fifth. It is 4-1 post. Five, six, seven do appear for posts in the bottom of the fifth. This game is flying by. Only been an hour here that we have been playing softball, and we are already at the bottom of the fifth. Eagles four, Griffins one. Eight hits for post, two for Chestnut Hill. And Baker on the mound here just threw her 60th pitch of the game. Eight hits allowed, four in runs, two walks, zero strikeouts. Baker, a freshman that is skied up in the infield. And Lopez Del Haro makes a grab for out number one here at the bottom of the fifth. Meta now 0 for 3. <laughs> Bailey Dickinson, 0 for 2. Fly, flew out to center in her first at bat, lined out to second in her seconds. And uh, coming in and making the grab there on the first pitch was McLaughlin, two down here in the bottom of the fifth. Calabrese, one for two. Steps in with two down here at the bottom of the fifth. Calabrese played softball and basketball in high school. Pops that up and a one, two, three in the bottom of the fifth for Baker. And we head to the six, a three run lead for your Eagles. Top of the six here at Lemoy Field. Nine and then top. Do up here for the Griffins. McLaughlin lined out to second in her first at bat. Get 
Okay, top of the six, and this is the nine batters second at bat only here in the game. This game has been flying by. Dickinson fields it, throws it in time. Out number one here in the top of the six. Top of the order, Dunham single to left in her previous at bat. She's one for two. Barnett with 52 pitches in this one. Misses upstairs and in. Two strikeouts, zero walks, one earned run, two hits. Eight hits for post. one -oh. on its way from number six, and it's Dribble Tomato, fields it, bobbles it, and an error on the Eagles, their first error of the game. Guzman steps in, 0 for 1 with that sack bunt in her last at bat. And Guzman slides that out into center, but Perusa, right place, right time, makes the grab for out number two here in the top of the six. Burnett messes outside. Lopez Del Haro has the lone run batted in. That was in her last bat, and she smokes this one down the right field line. That's going to be extra bases. Dunham is wave home. Lopez Del Haro will be going to third. She's sliding in there for an RBI two-out triple. Her second RBI of the game, and she is now two for three. She's got 13 RBIs now in the year. It's 4-2 Eagles. So an RBI double in her previous at-bat, and now an RBI triple in her at-bat right there. Two down in the top of the six, a two-run lead for the Eagles. That is the third hit for Chestnut Hill, two of them coming from number 13, the sophomore. Cunningham. 0 for 2. Flew out to left in her previous at bat. Ground out to third in her first at bat. One ball, one strike, two outs. Lopez Del Haro on third. And Barnett deals to Cunningham. And that's lifted out to center. Peruso makes the grab. To retire the side, we head to the bottom of the six. It is 4 2 Eagles.
Eagles looking for some insurance runs here in the bottom of the six. Eight hits for the Eagles, three for the Griffins. It is 4-2 post. Eight, nine, and then top two up here for post in the bottom of the six. Brooke Dickinson steps in. She is one for two. Had a bunt single in her previous at-bat. And that's ripped, and that will get through into left field. A leadoff single for Dickinson and the Eagles here in the bottom of the six. So Peruso one for one, triple to center in her first at bat and a sack bunt in her previous at bat. Might lay one down here. In this situation, no outs. She does not and takes the first pitch for a fastball right down the hatch for strike one. Baker with 66 pitches, zero strikeouts, two walks, four in runs, and nine hits allowed. And Peruso pops that one up in the infield. Can of corn. Watson stands at six foot two, makes the grab for out number one. Top of the order here for the Eagles. Rick Arduli, one for three here in the game. Got it out to second in her previous at bat. Takes that one right down the middle. The 0 1. Slapped down the left field line. That will be a foul ball. And Baker able to get ahead on the count here, 0 and 2. The 0 2. Nearly paints that inside corner. A nice spot there by the freshman. One, two, on its way from number 27, up and in. Two, two. Nice block there by Kwasak. Count is full. The payoff pitch from Baker is popped up to the left line, and it's grabbed by Lopez Del Haro for out number two here in the bottom of the six. So Caitlin DeAngelis, one hit away from the 150 hit mark in her post-university career. Only 14 players in post-university softball have reached that feat. Looks at the first pitch, a little upstairs. 75 pitches now for Baker. Both starting pitchers, Barnett and Baker, freshmen, and likely going to throw complete games here in the first game of the Wednesday afternoon doubleheader. Nine hits for Post, three for Chestnut Hill. 2 no count here. D'Angelo swings and misses at that off-speed pitch. A nice delivery by Baker. And D'Angelo, a senior, plays on the left side of the infield. Third base today. Pops that one up. Left field line. It will tail foul into the Griffins' bullpen. D'Angelo from Staten Island, New York. 149 hits in her post-university career. One away from the 150 mark. 2-2. Two -two. Dribbled to the left side. Foul. And DeAngelis gets another life. So no errors for Chestnut Hill. One for post. Sun trying to peek through the clouds there. A nice day for softball. Here in the... Beginning slash middle of April. 
And DeAngelis looks at that one on the outside corner. It's a ball, and it's three balls, two strikes, and two outs here in the bottom of the six. Runner on first. And the payoff pitch from Baker. Low, and DeAngelis draws a walk. And Tomasello will dig in here. Two for two with two RBIs and a walk here in game one. First pitch to Tomasello is low. She bloops that one into shallow left and making the grab as the shortstop, Lopez Del Haro. Chestnut Hill down to their final three outs. We head to the seventh. It is 4-2 Eagles. Top of the seventh, a 4-2 lead for the Eagles. Barnett at 60 pitches, two strikeouts, zero walks, one earned run, three hits allowed. A spectacular start for the freshman. In her 12th start of the year, comes into this start with a 5.75 ERA in 52.1 innings of work. And that one's rolled over. DeAngelis in foul play, taps it. It is five, six, seven. Due up here for the Griffins in the top of the seventh. Pokropinski leading things off. She's 0 for 2. Playing second base. Flew out to center in her previous at bat. Pokes that one. Tomasello fields it. No one's covering the bag, and it's an infield single. And that brings the tying run to the plate. Alone, 0 for 2. Popped up to first in her previous at-bat. Ground out to third in her first at-bat. The right fielder here today for the Griffins. Four hits now for Chestnut Hill. And that one's rolled over. DeAngelis feels it, nearly bobbled it, and throws it across the diamond with a lot of velocity for out number one. Watson, 0 for 2. Ground out to short in her previous at bat. Flew out to left in her first at bat. A 6 foot 2 junior from Wilmington, Delaware. Slaps that into right field. Calabrese got a poor read on it, and it's a ground rule double. So the tying run advances into scoring position. It is 4 3 Eagles. So Pokropinski comes home. The fifth hit of the game for Chestnut Hill. Two of the five coming here in the top of the seventh. Kwasek steps in. Again, tying run is in scoring position. That's slapped into right field just foul. 
Kwasek is 0 for 2. Popped up to first in both of her at-bats. McLaughlin on deck. She's 0 for 2. Nine hits for Post, five for Chestnut Hill, a 4-3 lead for the Eagles. Trying to snap their six-game losing streak. Chestnut Hill trying to snap their 16-game losing streak. And that one is poked to the right side. Maida fields it, throws it to first in time. Watson advances to third. The tying run. And that will bring up the nine-hitter, McLaughlin. Griffins down to their final out. McLaughlin ground out to short in her previous at bat. So it looks like we are going to get a pinch hitter here. So McLaughlin will not bat. It appears that Gabriella Quinones will step in. No. Yes. So Quinones, a sophomore from Poughkeepsie, New York. Kionis is not on the batting statistics. So it doesn't appear that she's had an at-bat all season. An opportunity to tie it up. She swings and misses at that one. And it is 0-2. Griffin's down to, down to their final strike. And that's Pokes. Barnett throws it to first, and the Eagles snap their six-game losing streak with the 4-3 win here in game one. And they advance to 5-26 on the year and 2-13 and in conference. Barnett gets the win with 70 pitches, five hits allowed, two earned runs, zero walks, and two strikeouts. Eagles take it. Game one, 4-3. Game two is coming up next right here at Lemoy Field. Test, test, test. 